Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a cinemagraph in camera and in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And I'm really excited about this episode. We put a ton of work into teaching you guys how to create a cinemagraph. And when teaching you how to create a cinemagraph, we realize there are two very important steps. One is teaching you what to do in camera. This is during the actual shoot to make sure you get the appropriate footage for your cinemagraph. And two, we're gonna show you how to do everything you need in Photoshop, including creating a loop that you're gonna be able to upload online and it's gonna look like one continuous movement. So to start off, what is a cinemagraph? Well, basically it's a short clip of video that needs to loop infinitely. In other words, the end needs to be the same as the beginning. So it's gonna go all the way back around and then start again. These clips can then be saved out as GIF files and then loaded up on the internet. So what you wind up seeing is one continuous loop of motion. And we're gonna show you how to do everything in this episode. Okay, so how do you actually go about creating a cinemagraph? Well, the first thing you need to know is that it's a short clip of video. So you're gonna need something that can record video. Now, in this example, we're using a digital SLR. We're using a Canon 5D Mark III, but you can use any digital SLR that records video. For that matter, you could use an iPhone. As long as you can record video, you can create a cinemagraph. The next thing you're gonna need is a tripod. It's gonna keep your camera perfectly still while you capture video. That's important because the end frame has to be the same as the first frame. And if there's any camera movement, you won't be able to complete the effect. The next thing you're going to need is a subject or whatever you're actually taking a video of. Now, again, a cinemagraph creates one continuous movement. So you have to take video of something that is going to move over and over and over continuously. In this example, we're using a record on a record player. It's got a very predictable motion and it's got an end point that's exactly the same as the start point. So for instance, a video of your dog running around the kitchen is not going to work. You need to make sure that the motion is going to end in the same place that it begins. And when it comes to capturing this movement, you're gonna wanna give yourself a little bit of a buffer. That way you have some footage before and after your key movement, and it's going to allow you to create the cinemagraph much easier. And the last tip, just for extra bonus points, be sure you're wearing a Flurn shirt. So we set up a demo of a record player spinning around so you guys could get an idea of the camera settings we use to capture the cinemagraph. In this case, we're using full 1080p, so we're at 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. We have a 1 over 60 shutter speed, an aperture of 8.0, and we're shooting at ISO 800. Those settings are probably gonna be a little bit different for your cinemagraph, but these settings will give you a good starting place for creating your video. So those are the essentials that you'll need to capture your first cinemagraph. This is a chance for you guys to have fun, so get creative with it, come up with a really cool idea. This could be an opportunity for you to stretch your creative mind and produce something that you've never done before. So now you know everything you need in order to capture great footage for the cinemagraph. Next, we're gonna jump into Photoshop and show you how to bring everything together. So we're here in Photoshop. The first thing I need to do is open up my video. And you're gonna be doing this exactly the same as you would open up a still image. I'm just gonna hit Control or Command O to open and we're gonna go directly to our footage. Now in our test example, we used a record spinning, but for this episode, we're going to be using this, for, <laughs> we're gonna be using something that's a little bit more interesting. So this is from fotolia.com, it's a stock image, and this is a .mp4, same as what would come out of a digital SLR. So let's go ahead and hit open here. It's going to open our footage. I'm gonna hit F to full screen this out. Okay, and now it should pop up with your video timeline. Here you can scrub through your footage and you can see the video play right here in your window. Now, if you don't see the timeline, just go up to window and then down to timeline. Make sure that's got the big check there and then you'll be able to work on your video footage here in Photoshop. So once again, guys, a cinemagraph is a small clip of video that's going to repeat itself infinitely in one loop. And in order to make that actually happen in Photoshop, all you have to do is make sure that the end frame is the same as the beginning frame. That way it's gonna create a continuous loop that's going to look like it's completely seamless. 
So once again, just remember that a cinemagraph is a short clip of video that repeats infinitely. So the first frame has to be the same as the last frame. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to actually pick that first frame. The most important thing to remember here is you cannot use the first frame of your video as the first frame of your cinemagraph. This will make a lot more sense in just a little bit, but you wanna make sure that the first frame of your video is actually a little bit into your cinemagraph. So we're gonna start right about there. So this is going to be the very first frame of our actual cinemagraph. So now that I've scrubbed to a location that I like, we've got these waves, they're looking relatively calm. I think I can come back to this place when waves come in and calm again. I'm gonna click right here on our footage and we're just gonna drag right to this red line. It's gonna automatically snap. There you go. And when I let go, it's gonna go ahead and trim it. So I'm letting go and it went ahead and trimmed our footage. So technically we have some footage before the beginning point here. We're gonna come back to that in just a second. The next thing to do is choose how long you want your cinemagraph to last. Now, my advice is make this as short as possible because you're gonna be uploading this to the internet and a short cinemagraph is going to equal a small file size, which is gonna allow a faster download time. So you can actually look at the thing when you're on the internet. So we're gonna choose a really short clip that I can still use to loop our motion. Okay, so we're gonna go all the way to the end of the timeline, click here, and I'm just gonna drag this in right until about here. We're getting a little bit of preview to see what we're actually doing. There we go. So this is our footage here. If I hit the play button, there we can see that's what it looks like. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I want this to play many times, so I'm gonna make sure to click on this little uh, gear here and say loop playback. There we go. So now when I hit play, it's going to go ahead and play it over and over again. Okay, now we can see here, this is the main problem you're gonna run into. When it ends, it doesn't have the same frame as when it starts. So you can see there's actually a little bit of a lag in the motion, you can see that jump. So our main goal here is to make sure we don't see that jump. We wanna make sure that it's completely seamless. So here's where it gets a little bit tricky, so make sure to stay with me. What I wanna do is duplicate the video that I have here. Now keep in mind, on the original footage, I have some space before my trim and after my trim. That's very important. So let's go ahead and duplicate this whole video group. I'm just gonna click here and drag down to the new layer icon. So now we have another one of these. So I've got video group one copy and video group one. And here in my timeline, I'm able to see both layers. So right now they look exactly the same, but we're gonna go ahead and trim and move them around to give that seamless effect. So remember when we started, we said we needed the beginning frame to be the exact same as the end frame. Well, now that we have two video layers, we can move these around to make that happen. So we're gonna click on this bottom video layer and I'm just gonna click and drag this all the way to the right until it snaps so that the end of this footage marks the beginning of this footage. Okay, that's very important. So the next thing we need to do is blend these two video layers together. Now, remember in the beginning, I said you have to cut a little bit off of the beginning of the clip? Here's why. We're gonna go down to our video clip and now I'm gonna bring back the information that we had at the beginning. So I'm gonna click right here and drag to the left. So click here and drag all the way to the left and it's going to bring back all that original footage that we had in the beginning. There we go. So you're like, okay, well basically you just undid what you started off doing. But keep in mind, what I have now is this beginning of my footage here is now the exact same place as this point in my footage here. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip this because I don't need the end. This is why it's important to get some footage before and after you loop. So let's just go ahead and bring this in from the right to the left. There we go. So now it's basically starting in between this frame and ending at the same place. Now I know this is kind of complex. It's a lot to get your head around, but basically what we did is we duplicated our footage then I move the bottom footage over, so I've got the same start point and end point. They're just on different layers. Then we extended the beginning of the bottom footage. This is going to give us some overlap, which is going to allow us to create the infinite loop. Next, we clipped off the end of the bottom footage, so both videos are ending in the exact same place. All right, so now what happens if we hit play? Well, I'm gonna hit play, and we see the same thing. It still jumps at the end of the footage, basically not looking right, and you're like, uh, I thought the whole point was to get rid of that and it is. What we have to do now is make sure the top frame is completely invisible by the time it gets to the end. 
What that's gonna do is it's going to allow the bottom footage to take over. Cool, so I know this is kind of complex guys, but my main goal is to have the footage on the top fade out by the time it ends, so it's gonna show the footage underneath it. And the footage underneath it ends exactly at the same place where the footage on the top begins, creating our infinite loop. So now what I need to do is make sure the top footage fades out by the time it gets to the end of the clip. It's really not that difficult to do. So here in Photoshop, I'm gonna go to my video copy one. We're gonna go ahead and open this down and you're gonna see position, opacity, and style. All right, so I want it to fade out, right? So that's opacity. I want it to be visible in the beginning and not visible in the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my slider right to the beginning of our bottom clip. This is where I want to start the fade. I'm gonna click right here where it says opacity. I'm gonna click on this little stopwatch right there. And you're gonna see now we have a yellow little keyframe here and a yellow keyframe right there. A keyframe is basically a marker in time that captures all the settings in time. So right now I have an opacity keyframe right here for this video group and my opacity is at 100%. So my goal now is to make sure the top footage has an opacity of zero at the very end, meaning it's gonna totally fade out. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and move my timeline. We'll just move it right about there. It doesn't really matter where you put it for now. I'm gonna click right here on my keyframe. So we're gonna add another keyframe on our video. So right now we have an opacity of 100%. I'm gonna move over here, and now I'm gonna bring my opacity down to 0%. So we can see it's going to basically start here at 100. If I click one more, it's gonna to go to, down to 75. Go one more, we're at 50. Go one more, it's at 25. Go one more, and we're at zero. Because I just said, at this keyframe, I want this footage to have an opacity of zero. And anything past that, it's going to be zero as well. So now what we have to do is click on this keyframe and drag it all the way to the end. So what I know now is that this top footage is completely visible up until here. And from here to the end, it's fading out from 100% visibility to 0% visibility. So now the footage on the top is going to be 0% visible when we get to the end, which is going to display the footage that's underneath it because it's not visible, right? So it's gonna immediately show what's visible underneath. Now remember earlier, we positioned that bottom footage perfectly to where the this frame right when it ends is actually going to be the exact same frame as the beginning of the other footage. Now, I know this is super complex, but we've done most all of the work already. So now when I hit play, it should be a perfect seamless transition. All right, so let's go ahead and hit play and see what we actually did. So now I'm hitting play, and we can see our footage just creates an infinite loop. Because what's happening is this footage is becoming invisible by the time it gets to the end, which is revealing this footage here, and the frame right here at the very end is the exact same frame as this footage right here at the beginning. So it's just fading into itself. Over and over and over, it's fading into itself. And that is the core of our cinemagraph. Cool, so we've created our animation and our cinemagraph looks great. But there's one more thing I want to do with this cinemagraph, and that's restrict the movement to just one part of this video. For instance, if I zoom in, you can see her hat here. If I hit play, her hat just kind of fades from one hat into another one. And the reason there is because this is not looped. The ocean is the part of the footage that is looped. The ocean, it's not really moving, right? It's, it's, well, it's moving, but it's moving in basically the exact same place. So I wanna go ahead and restrict the movement to just the ocean. I don't want our subject moving. I don't want her hat moving. I don't want anything else, just the ocean. So how do we restrict this movement to just one part of the video? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a copy and make it a still image and put this on top of the video. Then I'm gonna use a layer mask so we can see through part of the still image revealing the video underneath. So to create a stamp visible layer, I'm gonna hit Shift, Option, Command, E, which basically makes a visual copy of everything you see. Now, let's go ahead and click and drag this over. And this is a regular layer. You can see here in our layer, layer dialog, we have our video group one copy, our video group one, and then layer two. This is a regular layer, it's a still photo, and it's on top of everything. Meaning if I hit play now, 
nothing happens, right? There's no movement. It's because I created a still photo that's a copy of everything I saw before. So let's go ahead and trim this down because right now it's way too long. So we're gonna go to all the way to our end and trim this down to it's exactly the same endpoint as our video footage. So what we have now is a still photo at the top and then we have our looping footage right below it. So I need to create a layer mask on the still photo on the top to allow me to see through just where the waves are. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. I've got my layer two. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my layer mask. And basically what I wanna do is paint black on my layer mask anywhere I want to be visible because it's going to hide this layer. So I'm gonna just start painting black right over here. Now, if you want a better way to kind of see what you're doing, just hit the slash key. It's above your return key on your computer and it's going to allow you to get a visual display of what your layer mask mask actually looks like. Okay, so this is the same type of layer mask that I would be using on any type of photo. And if you want any help using layer masks, just do a quick search on flurn.com for how to use a layer mask, or we'll link to one in this episode. So basically, I'm just making sure that this layer that I'm on is invisible wherever I'm painting. So we just created a layer mask on the still image on the very top of our video footage. Now this layer mask is going to allow us to see through the still image onto the video underneath. So let's go ahead and hit play and see if everything worked. Um, let's cross our fingers. We're gonna hit play and all right, it looks perfect. So here we've layer masked out the left side of the frame and you can see the only area moving is the area we can see through the layer two. So this is in effect our cinemagraph effect. We're gonna go ahead and mask out the bright side and then we're gonna be done with our cinemagraph. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom in here. I'm gonna click on the exact same layer mask. We're gonna hit the slash key above our enter keys to so we can actually see what our layer mask looks like. And then I'm gonna paint with the black brush right over here all the way up into our subject. Now I'm just gonna do this relatively quickly here. When you're creating your cinemagraph, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do a really good job masking it and go all the way up to your subject. I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna get pretty close here. There we go. Now let's hit this slash key, zoom out, and see our effect on the image as a whole. All right, so all we have to do is hit play, and there we go. We've got ocean to both the left and the right, and no other movement in the image. All right, so by now we've showed you a ton, all the way from how to capture the footage in the camera, how to bring that footage into Photoshop, and how to actually create a cinemagraph effect. Now what we need to do is export this footage out as a GIF, which is going to allow us to view it on the web. So we've gone over a ton, all the way from showing you guys how to actually capture the footage you need to creating the cinemagraph to how to make it work in Photoshop. Now what we need to do is export this out in a format that's gonna read well on a web browser, which is going to be a GIF. So to do that, we're gonna go up to File, and I'm gonna go down here to Save for Web. So here in the Save for Web dialog, there are a few things that you're gonna wanna do. First thing is make sure you are set to a GIF, or a GIF, however you wanna say it. Um, it's gonna be at the very top. A JPEG and a PNG, these do not support any movement. Only a GIF will support movement. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on there. It's going to load up and it's going to return me a GIF that's going to actually play. So now it's time to tweak some of the settings within this dialog box. Our main goal here is to create the smallest possible file size while still getting a good looking image. Now by default, the Photoshop didn't apply any dither, which is getting us a 2.7 nine two megabyte file, but the image doesn't really look that good. I, I don't want that. So I'm gonna have to change this from no dither, dither down to diffusion, which is gonna give us a much better looking image, but it's going to be a bit larger. It's 6.3 megs. Now, the next thing we can do to lower our file size is make this a little bit smaller because right now it's 1920 by 1080. Maybe I don't need it to be that big. So let's try with, let's just go 1000 pixels and I'm gonna hit enter there, and it's gonna resize our image, and it's gonna give us a smaller file size. So now our image is a little bit smaller, it's 1000 by 563, and you can see our file size is down to just under two megabytes. Now the last thing we wanna look at here is our looping options. By default, this is going to be set to once. Now we don't want that, remember, because the whole idea of a cinemagraph is to have it loop infinitely. So click here where it says once, and go right down to forever, and this will make sure that it does loop infinitely. And the very last thing I would recommend doing is clicking on this preview button right here in this dialog. It's gonna go ahead and open the optimized image in a browser, right, what it says, it says that right there. So let's hit that preview button. It's gonna go ahead and open Chrome and it's going to show us 
our cinemagraph, how it actually would look in the browser. And you can see everything looks great. We're at 1,000 pixels wide by 563 high. We can see our file size and all of our options here. And we can see our cinemagraph really is looping infinitely. So everything is perfect. Let's go back into Photoshop and hit this save button so we can go ahead and get this uploaded to the internet. Okay, we're gonna call this cinemagraph final.gif. All right, let's go ahead and hit save and it's gonna stick it on my desktop. So now our cinemagraph is saved out as a GIF on our desktop. So the final thing to do is click and drag this into our browser just to make sure everything worked perfectly. So here we have our cinemagraph final.gif. I'm just gonna click and drag that right into Google Chrome. There we go, and we can see here's our cinemagraph fully completed and it's playing infinitely. Absolutely perfect. And that's how we create a cinemagraph in camera through Photoshop, exporting it out as a GIF and then loading it onto the internet. So when you're trying this at home, just remember these key steps. When shooting a cinemagraph, all you have to do is capture a video. You can do this with a high-end digital video camera, you can do it with a digital SLR, or you could even do it with an iPhone. Be sure you're shooting on a tripod. This is gonna allow your camera to stay in the same place, making your loop possible. Look for continuous movement in your subject. You want your end point to come around and be in the exact same place as your beginning point. Be sure to capture a little bit extra footage, both at the beginning and the end. Remember how we trimmed the beginning of our cinemagraph video and then brought it back at the end? That footage in the beginning is very important to capture. After you've captured your video, it's time to bring it into Photoshop. You can open it just as you would a still image. We're just going to File, down to Open, and choosing our video to bring into Photoshop. Make sure your timeline is visible for editing. If you don't see it, just go to Window and then down to Timeline. Next, we have to find the first frame of our cinemagraph. Be sure to cut off a little bit of the footage in the beginning. We're gonna need that to create the loop. After we've trimmed our footage, you wanna duplicate it into a new video group. Then you're gonna wanna move over the bottom group of the video footage. You wanna make sure that the top footage ends exactly where the bottom footage begins. Then we extend out the beginning of the bottom footage and clip to the end. This is giving us our infinite loop. Next, we need to make sure that the top footage becomes invisible towards the end of our timeline. To do this, we're adding keyframes with opacity. Make it 100% visible at the start of the bottom footage and 0% visible at the end of the bottom footage. That's gonna blend the video footage perfectly from one source to another one. Next, we need to restrict the movement of the cinemagraph to just one area of the video. We create a stamp visible layer on the top, which is basically just still image. Then we create a layer mask, allowing us to see through the still image just in the area we want the visible footage. When that's done, it's time to export out our footage. Go to File and then Save for Web. Be sure to change your file type to a GIF or GIF. Then adjust your settings so you can get the smallest possible file size while still making a good looking video. Be sure to hit that preview button in the Save for Web dialog. It's gonna let you know exactly what you're gonna see on your internet browser. And the last thing to do is pat yourself on the back because if you made it through this much of the video, you now have a pretty good understanding of how to create a cinemagraph. Thanks so much for watching, Florin, guys. I really appreciate you hanging out with me and learning some Photoshop together. If you like what we're doing here at Florin and you'd love to learn more Photoshop and photography for free, I might add, just click that screen button right now that says subscribe. We're gonna send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea for a new episode or a question or a comment about today's episode, please leave it in a comment right down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again, guys, and I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. All right, the second thing you'll need to know, the, the second thing you're gonna need is a tripod. The second thing you're gonna need is a tripod. Okay, the second thing you're gonna need is a tripod. From here, it's up to you. Go ahead and capture, from here, it's up to you. Now it's your turn, and now it's your turn, and now it's your turn. Go ahead and capture, and now it's your turn, blah, 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 blah. All right, so now it's your turn. All right, so now it's your turn. So those, blah, 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 blah. cool, so now it's your turn. So I'm just gonna choose, basically, a, as short as I can get, while looking like we're, cool. All right, so now the top, all right, so now the top, and there's a siren going off. Welcome to Chicago. All right, and you are awesome. If, and you are awesome. Cool, and you guys, and you are awesome. I am the Cinemagraph King. <laughs> I really am though, I'm the Cinemagraph King.